Imagine you just released this glass apparatus, people love it and you're way ahead of other tech companies, but you're now in the position to come up with an even better glass apparatus your customers love even more. And what Apple came up with is this device, the iPhone 4. S. Back in the days of 2011 it wasn't too surprising that you can barely tell the difference in terms of the form factor since the iPhone 3G and 3GS came with a similar design as well. But what changed? Was the iPhone 4S worth it and can you still use it today or is it e-waste? We'll talk about these questions in this video. First of all let's take a look at what changed on the outside. Front side? Hmm. Back side? Hmm. Bottom? Hmm. Top. Oh, there's a gap missing here. And even though it seems like an unimportant change, it's actually not. As you know, if you've watched my video about the iPhone 4, this device had massive problems with connectivity since it was pretty easy to cover all of the antennas while using it, especially when you're older. If you're indeed older, I really don't want to insult you, but you know the cool kids are just, you know, scrolling like this, finding cool alternative ways and bring variety to scrolling while older people tend to just use just one index finger and crunch the phone with the other hand. But anyway, the 4S came with four antennas and a different antenna alignment. Because of that, the silent switch had to move a little. So this is how you can distinguish between an iPhone 4 and 4S. Also, the iPhone 4S was slightly heavier but came with the same dimensions as its predecessor. But Apple sold 60 million of these, so you might already expect that there has to be more to it. And there most definitely is. The iPhone 4S didn't only fix the current issues and problems the iPhone 4 faced, it also came with features that avoided some problems in the future. First of all, and most importantly, it came with a new chipset. The iPhone 4 wasn't slow or performing badly, but as apps and the operating system were being improved and definitely became more demanding, it has been very important to put more power under this 640x960 326 ppi display. And now for the first time ever in an iPhone, we are finally talking dual core. The Apple i5 1.0 GHz Cortex just brought customers a whole new experience in terms of I touch something and bibbidi babbidi boo it's there. On iOS 5 and also 6 this device was so fast and well performing that it's still just mind blowing today I think. But the real difference between the iPhone 4 and 4S was brought to the surface when iOS 7 was released and the iPhone 4 was ready to be flushed down the toilet while the iPhone 4S was still kinda usable and heavily molested and made ready for the crapper two years later with iOS 9. Sorry by the way that I can't show you this terrible and sad state most of the iPhone 4s's are in right now since I downgraded all of my units when it was still possible some years ago. But I guarantee you aren't missing out on anything. And I don't have to speed up the video by 300% to show you something, so a win-win situation I think. Next to the CPU, the iPhone 4s featured a new 8 megapixels camera, a new panorama mode and full HD at 30 FPS video recording. Maybe it sounds like a tiny improvement compared to the iPhone 4 specs, but only Honestly, the photos and videos looked so much better. One more new feature many people were excited about was Siri, as it was called officially. I would most rather call this version Sorry. I didn't understand that. And this isn't an exaggeration, the beginnings of Siri weren't that good. But on the other hand, you could talk to your phone and do some basic tasks with Siri. And of course, it was improved in later versions of iOS. Furthermore, you could now pick up a 64 gigs model next to the already known 8, 16 and 32 gig variants. Also, you had to choose between the white and black model, which both look fantastic, but I think the black one looks even cooler. But what can you do with it today, in 2022? Well, um, you can connect it to iTunes and transfer illegally downloaded music to it or take photos, but I wanna be honest, on iOS 9 these bricks aren't more than dust absorbers and energy wasters. But if you can find units that are still running iOS 5 or 6, it's still pretty cool to travel back in time and to talk to old Siri and search the app store for hours to find a single app that still works. Furthermore, you might be able to dual boot these. All in all, I personally love this phone, it brought so much power to the already futuristic and beautiful iPhone 4 design. And of course, it is one of my favorite iPhone models of all time. What do you think about this beautiful apparatus? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Also check out this playlist. Have a good day and adios amigos.